This is Duke University. Historical writing has become much more exact than it was, say, a hundred years ago. And the counterpoint to that, of course, is that there's a huge popular imagination which is also insisting that its view of history not be pushed aside. And so there is a certain tension developing also between historians and this popular imagination of history. Um, which, all of which I think is an interesting departure from history the way we knew it a century ago, which makes it intellectually certainly much more interesting. But the one point I would like to make on the question of historians speaking across borders and boundaries, the onus is generally on the non-Western historian to read what Western historians are writing there's uh, much less of an emphasis within the tradition of Western historical writing of wanting to read what non-Western historians are writing. And I think that this is something that needs to be, um, well, not corrected, but it's something that, that we need to be aware of, that you know, we have to know what the theoretical positions are in the West, but the West is not interested in what our theoretical positions might be. And, and except for a handful of people. So this, this is broadly one of the things which I think can tend to, to uh, separate, as it were, the histories of different parts of the world. I, I think that uh, I have at least a tentative explanation for mm -hmm. that. It's not satisfactory. It's merely to say that at least I recognize what you're talking about. But uh, I think it arises from the fact that in the middle of the 19th century, we discovered, we discovered scientific history. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we thought that that was something we had uh, sort of title to. That is, it, it, was, it was our discovery, not yours. It was, it was something that we yeah. um, brought out to the light. And that uh, this gave us a kind of uh, advantage over uh, people who were working in some mm. dark, dismal area of, of <laughs> centuries ago. Uh, and it, uh, it contributed not merely to our understanding, sometimes superficial understanding of what was going on, but it contributed to our sense of superiority, if I may say yeah. so. That is, yeah. the, the feeling that we, we know how to do it, even if you don't know how to do it, poor you, you know. Sure. And uh, that, uh, that suggests that there is a kind of air of arrogance mm -hmm. and a sense of superiority because we have found the way, the scientific way. That's in quotation marks, the scientific yeah. way. Oh. Uh, and, uh, and you haven't. Uh, and that, that's, uh, from my point of view, unfortunate because I think it drives us, it, drives, we, it causes us to go down a narrow path mm -hmm. of of arrogance and of conceit and of a sense of understanding of the past that uh, is at best narrow and perhaps also erroneous. But uh, I, I frequently look at my contemporaries, my colleagues, and I, I, tend, to feel, I tend to feel that they are they have discovered the way, the light, and therefore they are not terribly interested in what you've found by digging around <laughs> in the <laughs> earlier period. We, we, know, we know what to do, we know how it's done, and this gives us a, not only an advantage, but a light which you, which you don't have. I think that's unfortunate, but it's, I think, true. I'm trying to merely yeah. to explain well. what, uh, what the problem seems to be in thinking of the earlier historians and the later ones. We, we, have, uh, we have terribly conceited about what we, what we have done, how, what we have discovered the last hundred years, which is nothing in the history of the world. Produced by Duke University, online at duke.edu.